What's up, everyone? Wait, I love it. What's up, everyone? <laughs> I think you leave that one. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's Magic here, and I'm right now in Tokyo, Japan, with one and the only Taylor Jackson. And since we're both wedding photographers, how long have you been shooting weddings? 20 years. Probably. 20 years. He's crazy. Asterix. I've been shooting 10. Uh, so we have actually, I'm gonna have a like, little chat with you about wedding photography. So if you guys are interested in wedding photography, there's gonna be three topics here, like gear and for wedding photographers, uh, like personality and the marketing. So let's start with the gear. So what right. do you shoot with right now? I shoot kind of with everything right now. So I, we're in winter and I do a weird thing where I actually sell a lot of my equipment over the winter and I buy new things in the summer uh, or in the springtime for weddings. Currently, my kit is a Sony A7R Mark V, a Sony A7 III, the Tamron 35 to 150. The ongoing joke is that people don't switch to Sony, they switch to Tamron. And I have a 20, which is my cake cutting lens, or maybe dance floor lens. And I also have a 50 1.2 D Master. Um, my Canon kit, R6 Mark II, R6, 35, 85 Samyang and the 7200. Okay, so you have like completely different take from me because like I I keep my stuff very much Sony in a Sony ecosystem and I do have like three main primes, 25, 35 and a 50. You kind of mix zooms and prime lenses. So like what do you think about zoom versus primes for wedding photography? I think so traditionally a zoom, I haven't loved it. I don't love shooting a 24 to 70 at a wedding day. You can use it, you can get by, you can get the job done, but I don't ever feel completely inspired. I don't enjoy the experience. I feel like using a 50 one two is a much more enjoyable time for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like it makes better work. It makes me work a little bit harder. And I feel like because of that, I stay a little bit more in the zone throughout the day. But the Tamron 35 to 150 kind of stands alone. On, it's, it's honestly the I, best wedding lens. I have never shot with it. It's nice. But it, did you broke yours? I broke mine. Mine's yep. a tilt shift now, so it kind of it's okay. in for warranty because it kind of goes side to side. Um, but the interesting thing with it is that it is a 35 f2, and then once you get to 150, it's an f2.8. But it feels like there's a mist filter kind of built into it, which could be seen as a negative if you want the sharpest, most perfect technical image possible. But for weddings, for you. it could be. But you want me. that. You want that little skin softening, so you don't have to go in and retouch too much. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah. at 35, it feels like there's just like a little kind of one eighth black mist filter on there. <laughs> and it's really, really nice. Um, also, the versatility of it is just amazing for yeah, ceremony yeah, yeah, specifically. Yeah. I kind of feel like the versatility of, 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 of zooms, that the versatility of zooms is awesome. But then like it makes you lazy a little oh, yeah. bit. And then if you go back to the footage <laughs> and you shot like 70% of the stuff on zoom, it's like 70% stuff, 70 of stuff at f2.8, mm. which doesn't give you that nice. It doesn't have the pop. Huh? So you need to you need to sprinkle in a prime. Yeah, 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 you need that yeah, yeah. 50, 1.2. Exactly. Or, I think like the mixing is for sure good. Like so, if you're starting out, getting like a kind of cheaper and zoom that will give give you everything you need, mm -hmm. and get one prime. What would be the prime? Fifty <sighs> or eighty-five? It's hard. So, as a more shy, introverted person, I found the eighty-five to be a really, really nice lens yeah. when I was getting started. It, it, honestly, with a newer-ish camera and an eighty-five, go out in good light find some shade like this and shoot 1.4 and you'll create images that you're just, you, you can't believe that you shot them. And I feel like I did that in the beginning and that's when I fell in love with that lens. And then over time I realized that I can be a little bit further away from my couples. Um, you'll find that your personality type, you're likely going to be attracting that style of couple. And I tend to shoot more kind of quiet, shy, introverted, styles of couples and they kind of appreciate that space. I feel like it gives them space to kind of to be their own. I'm not just like right up here yeah. in a 35 that they're, they're out there, they're doing their thing. I'm kind of giving them some soft directions, but I'm not being like, can you move your left hand three <laughs> inches up? Um, okay, I, I like that you're like smoothly going into the second topic, which is the personality, because oh. that's what that's what what that's what I want to men to ask you, because you're a more calm person mm. like I'm guessing you're like, are you like slow at the wedding or are you like fast paced, crazy? I, maybe a bit of an anomaly. So I'm, I'm the same person here as I am on a wedding day. Um, but let's I get to that uh, white there. wall. Yeah. Um, oh, good light. It's a, it's a nice bounce. Uh, I tend to work as efficiently as I possibly can. So one of my selling propositions or the things I tell couples is mm -hmm. that 
I don't want their wedding day to be a photo shoot. It's not. The, the wedding day should be the wedding. They shouldn't just hire me to do a four-hour photo shoot mm -hmm. and dedicate all that time and effort does, on their day. Yeah, does that mean you're like more hands-off too? Yeah, I'm pretty photo. I would say 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the day, mm -hmm. um, very photojournalistic. And then I'll step in for obviously the family photos and uh, photos of the couple. But in terms of the time that I need them for, if I have my couple for 10, 15 minutes for all their photos, so that can be yeah, split yeah, up. Yeah, that can yeah, be, yeah, yeah. Five minutes, first look. We're getting that there, we're getting there. Five minutes. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Oh, there it is. Um, that could be five minutes maybe after the ceremony, and then that could be another five minutes maybe during sunset. And if I have that time, I'm very happy. Same with the um, wedding party, 15 minutes, and everyone yeah. and everyone's like, wow, you're the greatest photographer ever because we actually Super get to go great. back to the drinks. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. fair. How about like, because uh, I feel like you, you touch upon that a little bit so during most of the time you're shooting longer lenses then yes because you're like kind of shooting like from the third like yeah, yeah. like that's i think that's one of the reasons i like having like for me like i shoot 24 35 yeah. and a 50 and i'm right there in the action mm -hmm. i kind of like feel when pe like people book me when couples book me they they want magic they see that they just don't want portfolio. photos they just be like oh i want this guy he's like yeah a nice he's guy in he's in it we want him in it, and so when I shoot, like I don't know, guys in a circle, I'll be in the circle <laughs> with the guys and shooting with like the widest lens yeah. I have. Uh, but that's that's really interesting because like what I feel is really cool about our job is that it's for kind of every type of personality. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, hundred percent. I've seen like super weird photographers, to be honest, in my career, <laughs> and they're like super weird people. Yeah, there's always gonna be a person to hire another weird person right yeah, yeah absolutely there's i think if you're marketing as yourself you will naturally find people that are pretty similar ish to you in terms of either interests or personalities yeah and so if you're if you know you're a weird person you're gonna attract <laughs> some weird people and you're gonna have an awesome time at those weddings you're gonna see some some ceremonies and some things that i will never see yeah, yeah. in my lifetime and if you're very specific to that it's like probably people that are friends of you of your couple right it's gonna be very similar. Yeah. So then you're just gonna book tons of weddings, like word of mouth, basically. Yeah. And they're gonna be fun. They're the most fun when you're photographing a wedding with people that you genuinely get along with. That if you can just kind of be a friend with a camera at the wedding, I feel like that's the best. So I'm happy that you found that. Yeah. I feel like I found that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you will, guys. You guys will find that. So it's kind of smoothly coming to the third point <laughs> again. Wow, it's not scripted, by the way. We're just this chatting. This is a one shot. This is too, like a yeah, edits. one shot. There, there's gonna be edits, but yeah. it's a one shot, by the way. Yeah. So, a marketing. Mm -hmm. Mark so, if you're starting out, you don't have much weddings to show. How how would you now start your like your wedding photography business? Like, would you do TikTok? Would you do Instagram? Would you do a website? Would you I don't know go to trade shows? What, what, what do you think these days? These days? Because like, uh, I feel like us, after 10 years, after 20 years, like word of mouth and being in this very specific niche, like is, is the way yeah. to go. Yeah. Because the ball is already rolling, it's, yeah. it's big. It's not on autopilot, but yeah. you definitely, you have to work less hard at marketing every year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, The more weddings you've shot. But how about in the beginning, if you would start right now, what would you right do? Now? What would Taylor Jackson do? I think that I would spend- WWTJD. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I would spend a lot of wait, time. Wait, sorry. wait, sorry. Coca-Cola track. It's Christmas coming, so there's Coca-Cola trucks that come out to the Is that a thing in Canada as well? That there's like a commercial, like Coca-Cola. This video is sponsored by Coca-Cola. I wish, actually. This is a great deal. <laughs> um, what was I saying? How would you start? How would I start? So I would definitely lean significantly more into the behind the scenes video aspect of getting started. So mm. all the shoots that you're setting up, set up shoots with your friends. Cause again, like your portfolio is going to be the thing that is marketing you forward. If you fill it with your friends, you fill it with the people that you want to be photographing weddings for, you'll Smart. find that reverse engineering yeah. on what we just said. Exactly. Um, so I would start there. I would start setting up as many shoots as I possibly could. I would, if I could go back in time, I would pay people to set up shoots in the beginning. I was mm. like, Hey, yeah, yeah. like let's go do photos and everyone was so flaky and they yeah. would kind of be like ah it's like kind of awkward to do a photo session i don't know if i really want to and they'd bail an hour or two before this shoot uh if i was offering them even a hundred dollars to come and to do the shoot they're gonna show up or offer them pizza and beer or whatever kind of makes the most sense um so get your friends in front of your camera get comfortable 
and start building a behind the scenes catalog, whether that means running a GoPro on your camera or having somebody actually come and Something that you can post then as reels. Yeah, as that reels. Insta stories. Build a promotional video. Um, I, I don't like, I, I'm gonna say in 2007, I was like, everyone needs to have a promotional video. <laughs> I wrote a book back then, I think. I wasn't qualified to write a book, but I did. Uh, you can buy it. Link is in the description. <laughs> Don't buy it. It was before Instagram, before uh, Facebook was kind of out. Buy it, take a photo, and tag us yes. in the Instagram stories. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, back then, it was a little bit different. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I, messed, <laughs> sorry. I messed up your mind. But yeah, you were talking 2007, everyone had... Oh, promotional, promotional videos. Promotional okay. video. yeah. So, 2007, I was... My friend did video. It was around the time that the first cameras could actually have uh, that you could do video on a DSLR lens, and you can get that nice shallow depth of field. And I'm like, as soon as that comes out, every single photographer in my city is going to have a promotional video. Their marketing is going to rapidly accelerate. They're going to be able to connect with their ideal couples way faster, way more, um, just professionally. Whenever you get in front of a camera and you're on this side, all of a sudden you get credibility, even though you can just point it at yourself and you don't yeah. need anyone to tell you you can do it. But kind of on the other, also because I also suggest people just shooting friends because mm. then the friends will start posting the photos mm. and you just build this little network of people that are posting your photos. So people posting your photos are basically a marketing for you, right? Mm. It's just spreading spreading yeah. news about you shooting. And you get to so practice. Yeah, you get to practice, you get portfolio and you get marketing. Mm. So shoot your friends. Very good advice from Taylor Jackson. Yeah. Look at this building, by the way. Oh, this one. <laughs> Does it remind you something? I don't know. Is it YouTube appropriate, actually? Uh, I'm sure somebody has animated this building in an, <laughs> an interesting way. All right, straight from Tokyo, Magic and Taylor. Thanks so much, Taylor. It's a Thanks. pleasure, as always. And yeah, watch some more videos. Subscribe to Taylor if you haven't already. Subscribe to Magic and see you guys in the next one. Ciao.